everyone, my name is Abby and we're so excited that you're joining us today. Today we're talking about the story of a man named Naaman who was healed of leprosy. Naaman was given an instruction from the prophet of God, Elisha, to be healed of his leprosy. But Naaman didn't really like the way he was told he would be healed. So he got pretty upset and stormed off without any intention of doing what Elisha said. Eventually, he came around and he got healed, but initially, he didn't respond the way he should have. Like Naaman, we have many times in our lives where we're told to do something. How are we going to respond? Will we react like Naaman, or will we choose to make choices that honor Jesus? That's what we're saying today. Every day, I make choices that honor Jesus. We're going to start things off by singing a song together, so go ahead and stand up. And let's sing this out as loud as you can. so good. Thanks for singing along with us. Now we're going to take some time to watch a Bible story together. Like I said earlier today, the story is about Naaman being healed of his leprosy. So let's check it out. Hey friends, what's in here with a brand new segment I like to call What's in 90s Puppet Theater? Now the 90s were a pretty dope time to be alive. People said things like, 
Booyah! And as if. And the 90s were a time where any old person could wear bandanas. Not just pirates and bikers. And everything was made out of jeans. It's like they had an overwhelming abundance of jeans. So much jeans that it had to be shirts and backpacks and hats. Hashtag so much jeans. But the 90s was more than just jeans. It was also a big time for puppets, such as myself, to get into acting. We did plays, we did movies, TV shows, and my personal favorites, Bible stories. In fact, we have a Bible story today from deep in the heart of the 90s about a guy named Naaman who had a terrible disease called leprosy. And there was no cure for leprosy. It was, as they say in the 90s, a wiggity whack. But this Naaman guy really wanted to be cured. So we talked to his old pal, the king. And the king sent him to the prophet Elisha. And that's where our 90s puppet theater picks up. So let me dust off this old VHS real quick. And we'll watch this story together. Are you sure this is the place? Oh, yes, my lord. This is the house of Elijah the prophet. Listen, my lord, someone is coming. You must be Elisha. This is my master, Naaman. He has come to be healed of leprosy. I'm not Elisha. I'm Gehazi, Elisha's servant. Well, where is this prophet Elijah? I want to see him. I have brought great treasure to pay him for healing me of leprosy. Elijah told me to tell you to go down to the Jordan River and dip into the water seven times. Your skin will be healed, and the leprosy will be gone. What? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. I came all this way for nothing. Dip seven times in the Jordan River. Ha! Driver, get us out of here. Whoa, whoa. Master, I beg you, reconsider, sir. Perhaps you should do what the prophet says. I thought that the prophet himself would come out of his house and pray to God for me. Oh, I expected him to lay his hands on the place where I have leprosy and make me well. Why couldn't I go back to Damascus and dip in the Abana River or the Far Par? Why, they're far better than that dirty old Jordan River. Please listen, Master. If the prophet had asked you to do something hard, wouldn't you have at least tried it? He's right, my lord. It is a simple thing to dip into the Jordan River. What could it hurt to do this? Very well. We will go to the Jordan River. Yeah. How many times did he say I should dip? You must dip seven times, my master. All right. Here goes. Oh. Hey, well, I don't see any changes. Six more dips, master. All right. It's gonna hit pause real quick. Uh, this is taking too long. We don't have time for all these dips. If you're gonna dip that slow, then you ain't gonna dip at all. So I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit here. It's supposed to fast forward fast forward, and that should be good right there. Okay, let's pick it up with dip number six. Take it away, Naaman. Six. Hey, there's nothing happening. The prophet said seven times, my master. Dip once more. All right, here goes. Wow, look, I'm clean. The leprosy's gone. That is great. It was so simple. All my master had to do was obey the word of the prophet of God. Oh, oh, oh. there is no God in all the earth but the God of Israel. Oh, snap. That story was all that in a bag of chips. Naaman was tripping, but his servants were all like, hey, maybe you should just dip into that yucky old river like that Elisha guy said. So Naaman did, and he was totally healed. That's awesome. Man, last time I dipped into a yucky river like that, I just got stuck in it. And I had to wait there for like three days until someone came and found me, and I was all thirsty and hungry, and they rescued me, and I didn't get healed or anything. I just lost my shoes and ruined my pants. But hey, enough about me. Thanks for watching Watson's 90s Puppet Theater. That was awesome. And maybe they give it a minute. That's all, folks.
What a crazy story, guys. Nothing happened the first six times Naaman dipped under the water, but on the seventh and final time, he was completely healed. Imagine being one of Naaman's servants watching this whole thing happen. Do you think you would still believe Naaman would be healed after dipping again with no progress? I would encourage you to pause the video here and take a couple of minutes to talk about that. Then once you're done talking about it, unpause the video and continue. Our friend, Pastor Andrew, is going to be talking to us a little bit more about our story right now. So let's take a look. Have you ever seen beautiful flowers before in a garden? Maybe your parents have a garden outside the house, or maybe you've seen plants at the zoo, or maybe you even got to grow your own plant at school. I have a plant here. So my question for you is this. How did this plant become so strong and so beautiful? Did it just suddenly appear like this one day? Well, no. It grew. It grew from a little seed just like this one. A gardener planted a seed into good soil, and then the seed needed to be nurtured. It needed water and sunlight to grow. Did you know that when you join God's family, God plants seeds of the fruits of the Spirit in your heart? He does. But what are the fruits of the Spirit? You can find the whole list in Galatians 5, but here are a few examples. Things like love, joy, patience, gentleness, and self-control. It's kind of like your heart is a garden, and God plants good seeds in it. He plants seeds of love, joy, patience, peace, and self-control into the garden of your heart. But what do the fruits of the Spirit need to grow? First and foremost, the fruits of the Spirit need their gardener. The good seeds that God planted need God to be their good gardener. Without God, those seeds will not grow. God is our good gardener who nurtures the seeds that He planted. We can be confident that God has begun to work in our lives and He will complete that work. Second, the seeds need water and sunlight to grow. When we choose to exercise our faith by making choices that honor Jesus, it's like the seeds in our heart are getting water and sunlight. Think about the story of Naaman. Naaman had leprosy and God gave him instruction through the prophet Elisha. Instead of listening and obeying God with a good attitude or with the fruits of the Spirit, Naaman became angry. Anger is not one of the fruits of the Spirit. Because Naaman grew angry instead of obeying God with a good attitude, it's kind of like Naaman made room for a weed to grow in his heart. So what should Naaman have done? He should have exercised his faith by obeying God with a good attitude. He should have practiced the fruit of the spirit of joy and self-control. So what do you do when God tells you to do something? What do you do when your parents ask you to clean up your toys or to clean your room or turn off your video game when you really don't want to? Or what do you do when you realize that you need to change the way that you talk about other people, even though all your friends are doing it? Or what do you do when you are mean to your brother or sister and you know you need to apologize even though it'll be really difficult to do? Do you obey God with a good attitude? Do you exercise your faith by choosing to be full of joy and self-control when you obey? Or do you choose to let weeds grow in your heart by becoming angry or by complaining? When we choose to obey God with a good attitude, it's like those seeds in our heart are getting watered and they're getting stronger. Choosing to obey God with a good attitude is always the right choice but it's not always the easiest choice to make. I want to encourage you with what 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says. You are tempted in the same way all other people are. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted any more than you can handle. But when you are tempted, God will give you a way out. He is our strength. And because of that, we can make choices every single day that honor Jesus. And those good seeds that God planted in our heart will grow to be full of good fruit. Pastor Andrew talked about how our heart is like a garden and God plants seeds that will grow into fruits. Not real fruits, but fruits like love and joy and peace that we find in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I would encourage you to get out your Bible and read through the whole list of the fruits of the Spirit for yourself. Then talk with your parent or small group leader about which fruit of the Spirit you have the hardest time with and why. Once you've done that, take some time to pray together and ask God to help you grow that fruit of the Spirit in you so that you can make choices every day that honor Jesus. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.